security visualization. Why would you visualize for security? What some of the reasons? Well, there are multiple reasons. One is just to explore and discover. Sometimes these visualizations are going to answer questions. Other times they will bring up new questions. If you look at this graph, you probably have a lot of questions. They help you making decisions. They give you a situational overview of what's going on. Sometimes graphs or visualizations just inspire. And sometimes they're just fun. So let's look at these examples that are tools that visualize security data. Here you see a graph of IRC data. Make up your own mind. What do you see? What can you read from this? What does it tell us? looks complicated. This is a parallel coordinate graph, completely jammed. I can't tell you what's going on here. It looks pretty complicated. This is a three-dimensional view. Looks interesting. The colors probably don't get quite across in this beamer here, but um, I think you get the idea. Let's look at some simpler charts. What else can go wrong? This here is a huge table of SAPT codes. Um, this table shows if there are conflicts in uh, separation of duties. Um, it's a pretty big table. Um, I think there are about 15 of those tables. This is a bar chart that starts at 3 on the y-axis, if you look there. So the areas are completely out of relation. They don't really tell us much. This one is even worse. There's two categorical dimensions mapped onto a bar chart. This doesn't tell us anything at all. The bars are completely deceiving. Information overload, clearly. I can't even read the labels. Well, 3D is probably the answer, right? More dimensions, three dimensions, more data. Think about what happens if one of those back bars is actually smaller than the ones in the front. You're going to lose. You're not going to see what it is. So 3D is not always the solution. This one here, I might see some trend on the left side with all these data points, but there's occlusion happening here. The labels start overlapping. I can't really read what the values are. So probably not the solution. Everybody loves pie charts. Um, some people go over the top with pie charts, stacked pie charts. Um, it takes you a while to read this, probably. It has two dimensions of data in there. This is a horrible example I found in the security tool. Do you see that glare? That's not data. That's just visual clutter. It's just a, flare, a, a lens flare on it. It doesn't encode any information. Pie charts on here, there's, the labels are the percentages, but what are those individual sectors really? You have to go back to the legend. Um, why not using a bar chart? Dashboards, you all have seen dashboards probably. Three-dimensional pie charts, even better than just 2D, right? Um, gradients used. Another great pie chart here. I love this one. All the slices seem to be the same size, but are they really? What happens if there are small variances? You won't be able to see that. What about specific security tools, things that have been written to visualize security data? This one here, one example. I don't think you can actually see there's red in there. This um, is an example that visualizes network traffic. Um, OK, so what? What does it show me? What does this here tell me? You need, you need to read the paper to understand this, and the paper is an academic paper. It's great. This one here um, poses a lot of questions. I want to start drilling down. I want to investigate what are these values, what are those nodes, what's the traffic below that. 
I don't have to say anything about this one. Here, a three-dimensional example. Um, network topology is mapped. Um, can you get, show me the trends? Here, a, a, great, a nicely rendered um, US map or, or America's map. What are those bars in the back on the horizon? I don't even know where to locate it. Um, well, maybe adding some lines that connect all the different locations. What happens if there's a lot of traffic? Are you going to see the map even? Here's uh, made slash dot news, uh, GL tail. Uh, I looked at it, it's, it looks great visually, but my question was, so what? What does it show me? So let's look at the New York Times. A lot of you probably read some newspaper, the New York Times. If you look through some of the charts, they're simple. They're, they have legends. There's a lot of text in there. You can, re you can read what's going on. Here's another example of a line chart. Uh, with a lot of descriptions, what's actually shown. There are labels on the axes. Here, there's, they use two charts to show a certain property or go into details of one of those bars on the left-hand side to give you more detail. This is just a table, a table with some bar charts in them, not pie charts, bars. You can actually compare these things. Here you see a map and again augmented with some bar charts that actually um, show the details of the values. Here, another line chart here, six line charts. Sometimes one chart just doesn't cut it. You could overlay all these lines in one. Again, tables, very simple tables, a very simple line chart. Note that 4.9% of the top right, it actually shows what the value is currently, highlighting some of the values. The New York Times also uses more complicated charts, like scatter plots or sector charts. So look at this one. It looks fairly complicated. But it's very visually simple. They help you with, with the legend right there. They label the quadrants. What does it mean for something to be on top right? What does it mean for something to be on bottom left? Again, there's text that describes things. Here you see what happens if the MSN and Yahoo merger, something moves over to the right. So there's movement, there's change encoded, encoded in this graph. And again, there's text describing what's going on. They're very, very creative at the New York Times. If you look um, at some of the charts they do, they have a timeline here. And sometimes they even get the news right, not just the graphs. This one, very creative. They map the words that different politicians were using during their speeches here, Democrats versus Republicans. Uh, the circles, the size encodes how many times this word was mentioned in a speech. Very creative. Another example here where they break it down by people. On the bottom you see a summary of all the terms mentioned. Again, in the table you encode with different bubble sizes. So you see right away what was the most used word. What's the distribution among the people of these words. Or here, maps, they use a lot of maps. There's a lot of information you can encode. But again, there, there is a legend for this. You can't see it right now. But then also, there's annotations. What is, what is this area here about? There's text that describes what's going on. Or this here, it's, um, to read this, it takes you a while. You need to know what the colors mean. This is a tree map example. But they don't shy back from using these more complicated things. So with this, I'm going to end this little overview video, and I'm going to switch over to my um, presentation.